Hey everyone, it's Nick from Splice, and today we are going to make a beat around a guitar chord progression using the Impact XT instrument and Pattern Editor. First, let's take a listen to the guitar chords. If you're interested in seeing how this chord progression was made, check out the chord track walkthrough video. The link is in the description. To get started, let's use the keyboard shortcut Command F. This allows us to quickly search our library for the impact instrument. You can see we have 16 pads here. There are actually 8 banks total, giving us 128 sample slots, each with their own amp, pitch, and filter controls. Next, we'll open the Splice app. I've already gathered some samples into a repack. A repack is a custom playlist of your own sounds, and you can even create repacks from your phone's browser. I find this to be a great way to work on music, even away from the computer. To add samples to Impact, simply drag the sample from the Splice app onto the individual pads. Now this one is a long loop, let's go ahead and shorten it by taking the end marker and bring it inwards. We can also click and drag downwards to zoom in. Yeah, that sounds better. When you normally double click in an arrangement, it will insert a piano roll. In this case, it's showing us the drum mode since it detected we were using the Impact XT. The drum mode only shows the attack of the note and is great for dense drum patterns. So dense. To open Pattern Editor, right click on the clip, go to Instrument Parts, then Insert Pattern, or Shift Command P. You can single click to put in notes. Let me make a basic beat. Yeah, and we'll outline beats two and four with the rim. Let's take the volume down a little bit. We can duplicate the clip using D, so now we have two instances of the same pattern. We can use the functions on the top right to quickly fill in notes. I'm going to use the fill every step button for the hi-hat. The hi-hat is a little harsh, let's put a filter to smooth the sound out. I'm going to use the high pass ladder mode. You can control the overall pattern length at the top left where you see the steps value. One unique thing about Studio One's pattern editor is that you can actually control the step length of an individual lane. Let's take this roll and have it repeat every beat. So we'll take the steps value down to four. And maybe we experiment here. If you take the steps to an odd number, it will displace over time. The other thing we can do is change the resolution. If we go to 1 32nd, it will play the notes twice as fast. or maybe twice as slow. <music> Lastly, you can double or half the lane resolution. This changes the amount of steps available without changing the overall rhythm. Let's try adding some triplet bumps on the hi-hat. Awesome, so now let's visit the functions at the bottom to add more musicality to this beat. The velocity editor shows the velocity for each step. You can click and drag this to quickly change the values. The repeat function is also very useful, especially for hi-hats. 
This will take each step and repeat it a given amount of times. In this case, once. Or twice. Let's create a little roll here. We can also adjust the probability in this window. If we want the rolls to occur half the times, we can bring it around here. Or maybe even just 1% of the time. We won't listen until that happens. That would be kind of mean. Now I like this pattern, I'm going to double the length to 32. Notice the notes within the pattern don't actually double themselves. Let me switch back to the default. Let's fill in some notes here. And put in some more rolls. Maybe play around with that repeat function a little bit more toward the end of the phrase. That sounds good. We can use the keyboard shortcut D to duplicate parts of the pattern. And now time to add some percussion. It's a little loud. Let's take the velocity down. That's better. Now if we want to put reverb on just the percussion samples, we can send each of these pads individually to their own mixer channels. On the bottom right of each pad, you can see the option to map the pad to their own channels. Let's map the higher block to channel 2 and the lower block to channel 3. You can see in the mixer that now the lower block is on channel 3 and the higher block is on channel 2. Next we'll go to our inserts and add in room reverb. We can take the size up a little bit and take the mix down. Great, now I want to add some bass, so let's add in a new track and name it 808. We'll search for sample 1, because I have an 808 sample that will work well for this. Next, we'll drag and drop the 808 into sample 1. Now I'm going to copy the drum pattern over to the 808 track using option drag, and we'll convert it back to piano roll by right-clicking and selecting convert to instrument part. We can then use command click on the piano notes themselves to select all the notes in that pattern. Let's remove all the notes except for the kick. This way the 808 lines up perfectly with the kick. Let's go to actions, length, and turn on legato mode. This will make the notes connect to each other. Next we'll use shift plus arrow key up to move the notes up an octave. Lastly, we'll go to sample 1 and turn on mono mode and glide. Glide is going to cause the pitch to slowly move over time when moving from one note to the other. Let's put this up two semitones.
And that's how you can start a beat using Impact XT and the Pattern Editor in Studio One. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.